Let's start with Sky Zoom 4 over Friendly Temple. As I said, the funeral for 18-year-old Michael Brown at the Friendly Temple in North St. Louis is underway. Services started at about 10.30 this morning. Thousands in attendance. The church holds 5,000. Michael Brown shot and killed just over two weeks ago by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson near the Canfield Apartments on West Florissant Avenue. News Force Mike Colombo is live outside the Friendly Temple Church, and Mike, people began lining up at 7 a.m. hours early. Yeah, that's right, Sharon. If you look behind me, you can still see the people who are outside the church right now. The church is at capacity, but they are still hoping for a glimpse or some sound of what is going on inside. I did have the opportunity to speak with some people who were inside and then went outside. They let me take a look at the program that was passed out to those who were inside the church right now. And take a look here. You can see exactly what that looks like. The first picture you're going to see here is the cover. It reads, A Celebration of Life. The following pictures are of Michael Brown through his 18 years on earth. Also inside the program was a moving letter written by Michael's father. In it, he questions why God took his son, but writes, God Almighty doesn't make mistakes. That's why you were called home. You're now seeing some of that video from this morning as people lined up outside the church singing, We Shall Overcome. They were prayerful and peaceful, many saying they felt they needed to attend the funeral to feel peace, even though they aren't the Brown family's friends or family members. I also had the chance to speak with Reverend Jassy Jackson, and here's what he had to say. Be to the community, both in Ferguson and throughout St. Louis, on what the Brown family is asked to be a day of peace. It should be a day of, 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 of course, quietness. It's the absence of noise, peace, the presence of justice. The day must be the continuous pursuit of a thorough, transparent investigation on the Michael Brown situation. Certainly a day of many emotions out here. We will continue to chronicle what's happening. As you know, the funeral taking place as we speak. Sharon, back to you. Mike Colombo for us and News Force Robin Smith, also live at the Friendly Temple Church. And Robin, we just heard from Reverend Jesse Jackson, but you've seen several other dignitaries from all over the country at today's service, several celebrities in attendance too? Um, we know that there are quite a few well-known names that are there. We've seen different ones on the air today, and we've been monitoring all of the services inside. Um, we know quite a few dignitaries are here. Let's take a look at the video. We know that uh, movie director Spike Lee is in the church for the funeral. U.S. Congressman William Lacey Clay speaking during the services. U.S. Congressman Clay confirming that Congresswoman Maxine Waters is here. She's a native of St. Louis who went to high school in St. Louis, but now has for many years represented the state of California in the U.S. Congress. The Reverend Jesse Jackson as Mike Colombo referenced. And then Martin Luther King, the son of the Nobel Prize winner, is here. Reverend T.D. Jakes, who's a nationally known minister and author. And Tom Joyner, the nationally syndicated radio talk show host, is there as well for the services. Civil rights leader Al Sharpton speaking during the funeral service. Like you don't understand that Michael Brown does not want to be remembered for a riot. He wants to be remembered as the one that made America deal with how we going to police in the United States. Of course, we are outside right now, and you can see the media waiting as well as those who are unable to get inside, just wanting a chance to be a part of the services for Mike Brown. Sharon. I will give a brief legal reference before I bring a man up who always answers the bell when we call. He answered the bell for Trayvon Martin. He answered the bell for Eric Garner. And he answered the bell of Michael Brown's family when his grandfather called while Michael Brown was yet on the ground for over four and a half hours. It was 162 years ago, about it 10 miles. Like three years down. ago, and he truly became my best friend. We spent so much time together just talking about God. He was truly curious about what God had to offer. About a month ago, we both completed the first book of Genesis and Revelation, and that really. That truly opened his 
his heart and his mind to God. Um, the week that Mike Mike was killed, I was admitted in the hospital, and Mike Mike called on a Tuesday, and I was out for testing. And he talked to his dad, and he asked where I was, 